today's video, I'm going to show you my completed trailer conversion and talk about some of the things I might change for next year after living in it for two weeks. So let's get started. My name is Clint Campbell and I run the Truth From The Stand deer hunting podcast where we talk all about bow hunting tricks, tips, and tactics. And today I'm going to talk about the trailer conversion that I did completed, walk you through it, what worked, what didn't, what I might change after spending two weeks on a rutcation living in this purple trailer behind me. Let's hop in. All right, welcome to my DIY mobile public land hunting crib. We'll start at the business end of, uh, of the trailer. Those of you that are new, this is a six by 10 cargo trailer, nothing fancy. I got it really cheap and did all the conversions myself. So everything you see in here is my excellent carpentry skills, not so much. Uh, the business end here starts with the, the heater, Dickinson heater. I think it's like 10, 9,000 BTUs, I think. <clears throat> Honestly, um, probably way more heater than I needed for this little this little unit, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. Um, one of the things I need to kind of consider here is, uh, is I have a window in to kind of help release some heat, but I need to probably put in a couple more vents in the back to let the heat out. As we all know, heat rises, so where my bed is placed as I'm up off the ground, that's the hottest part of the of the trailer so when you don't have super cold temps like it is today into the 20s you know it can get kind of hot uh, back there especially if you have other people sleeping on the ground um, or at ground level where it's a little cooler they're comfortable and you're cooking the other part that is kind of the brain of this overall system is the is the solar generator uh, i did a video putting in the solar power so i'll link to that link in the description if you want to check out how i install all the solar panels and stuff but I have probably 280 watts worth of solar power on the on the roof. Um, run into a Blue uh, Blue Eddy 1500 watt hour solar generator, uh, and this thing was killer. I never lost. I never in the course of a day. There were three guys living in this for the better part of two weeks. We were filming a bunch of stuff as well, so there was a lot of batteries to charge, um, laptops to run, cell phones to charge, and we never pulled the battery down more than 20% roughly, like one bar. And then during the course of the day, the solar panels would recharge that entire thing. So this is mainly made for me to be solo or maybe with one other guy. Um, and we did two weeks with three guys in this, uh, charging a bunch of stuff. So plenty of power. The first place it provides power is this you know, little cabinet, which is kind of a charging station. Um, this is typically where we'll put all the batteries and stuff like that that need to be recharged during the course of the day or you know, in, at night while we're sleeping. The other important piece of this, uh, the solar generator is just a little adapter hooked up to the heater um, as the heater does have a small fan on it to kind of move the heat around, which is key. Today when I jumped in here, to film this, it was like 26 degrees, um, and right now I think we're sitting at just a little bit above 60 degrees, and it's been on for maybe 40 minutes, um, and it will run, you know, 110 hours on one tank on a 20-pound tank of propane. Um, so, you know, I barely even touched it on this last trip. One tank will probably last me a, a full season for the most part. The other part of this uh, kind of power station section is a WeBoost cell uh, booster. So one of the things, or one of the reasons I built this was I like to travel to hunt, but I'm a working guy like everybody else out there. So my days off are limited, you know, to vacation days. So if I could create something or make something to where I could travel and work out of it, I could probably work remotely as I'm doing a lot right now because of the pandemic. Um, you know, I can probably go hunt and hunt mornings and evenings and be able to work during the course of the day and work from this so long as I have consistent cell and Wi-Fi. And so I've got a cell extender that will then kind of boost my cell signal to make sure I can use my phone as a hotspot or if I want to get a separate hotspot, you know, do that. Verizon makes them, a couple different places make them uh, to make sure I have consistent cell service so I can work while I'm out hunting. The other important piece or part of the business end of this trailer is the uh, is the little shelf that I put in. It might seem like it's a super cheap addition. It costs next to nothing to make, but it was vital in terms of being able to keep stuff up off the ground and a place to like do some cooking, some light cooking. I'll use a jet boil to cook. Last year, one of the things that I changed or that I'm probably gonna change going forward is what I typically do is pre-make all my food, freeze it all, bring it all along, and then I use a propane burner with a pot and heat everything up in the evenings. What I think I'm gonna to change to is just using this jet boil and dehydrated food, just much quicker, much easier, 
much less to clean up. And so this jet boil was really critical. That was where I ate my breakfast, oatmeal in the mornings, some skull brew coffee in the mornings, and that jet boil was key. Boil one kind of container of, of water and made my coffee and my oatmeal and I was good to go. All right, the next thing we have that was super important um, is the closet that I ended up using. Um, I don't really use ozone machines in the timber or whatever, um, but this thing was awesome for having a spot to kind of store all my hunting clothes when I come back from, from a hunt. A lot of times I keep that stuff in the back of my truck. I guess it's worth mentioning. You know, anything that is not critical or not needed in the trailer itself stays in the back of the truck. So like dry food, snacks, stuff like that. My saddle, sticks, platform, all that stuff, backpack, all the things I'm gonna take to the timber with me, my bow, all that stuff stays either in the bed of my truck or in the cab of my truck. That way I don't that way I don't forget it. But my hunting clothes, you know, a lot I would come back and I would change, you know, when I got back to camp. And I would just throw everything in this closet and hit it with a dry wash. That's the one thing I do like ozone for is that whenever I'm out on these trips in the middle of nowhere, I'm not able to wash my clothes. Um, this year it was really hot. I was sweaty, stinky. And so it was nice to have something when I came back here just to kind of throw everything in, give it a quick wash, and then it was good to go for the next day. So the next thing to check out is the bed. Um, you know, this was part of the build, of course. I'll link to the, the original build of this of this trailer when I built the bed so you can kind of see how I did it. But it's just two by fours and plywood. And then I got a memory foam mattress. I wanted to have something that was comfortable. And the reason I built the bunk is because I wanted to have storage underneath of it. And it's just long enough for me to fit in. I'm, I'm like 5'9", so this is about a six foot wide trailer. After you get the internal walls and stuff like that, it fits me just about perfectly. Um, and so this was great for for sleeping and sleeping comfortably out on these out on these trips, especially when you're gone for a long period of time. So just a memory foam mattress, you know, I think it was like 120 bucks. I'll put a link in the description for that. And then just a regular, nothing fancy um, sleeping bag, and that was it. So the other cool thing about this is if you know is whenever I'm out traveling and, and hunting, and if I do need to check into work or whatever, if I'm going to stay for an extended period of time and I'm going to work remotely, I built this to be about the same height that I was that I would want to have. Uh, for a standing desk because I can basically just pull back the uh, the mattress and the um, and the sleeping bag and flip it up on one side and then I can kind of sit my computer or my laptop you know in one section and have a standing desk and then all my power that I would need to you know to plug in or headphones or whatever is all right here underneath my bed a little charging station that was for charging my phone specifically when I'm sleeping but also that way in case I needed to work from here and have a place to charge my laptop really the bed in the front you know where the the heat and the solar are, are really the kind of two critical pieces uh, that really kind of make this thing work. So um, super comfortable bed, works as a desk, so check both of those boxes. Next is the uh, molly wall right behind me or the molly attachment kind of patch. Uh, I was trying to, again, figure out how to try to keep stuff off, st st <laughs> how to keep stuff up off the floor. Um, and so I installed this, that way I would have a place to kind of put a phone holder, that way it wasn't just laying underneath my bed or just hanging somewhere to get broken or dropped. Um, and then put two pouches on there that I could hold um, tumblers or water or whatever. That way we weren't spilling stuff on the floor. And they have little pouches on the front as well. I keep some extra coffee in those. Um, then I also have a, a place to store my, uh, my laptop as well. That way if I'm, I'm working or doing a podcast or whatever when I'm done, I can just kind of throw the, the, uh, the laptop in that pouch, leave it plugged in so it charges overnight so I'm good to go. So that was super important to put in. Probably one of the best pieces, small, again, kind of like the shelf. A very simple solution, um, but was really kind of important as far as keeping things organized and stuff like that because it can turn into a mess in here pretty quickly. One update for next year that I might be using or doing, I might find another place or two, maybe on the door or something like that to put another one um, just because it's so convenient having that to kind of store stuff on. One of the things you guys might be wondering is how do you fit multiple people in here? Um, like again, I'll say two people is, is probably the right amount. Three is hard to fit in here, but we've done it. Uh, so what I actually did, that was actually the hardest part of, of figuring out where to put everything with this trailer was because I had such small, such little space and I knew most of the time I was gonna have at least me and one other person in here for, for traveling. My buddy Chad Sylvester, shout out to him from, from Exodus Outdoor Gear. He's my, my road dog and usually we're traveling together when we hunt. And so he's cool with sleeping in a hammock. So I created a, a system here to where I can put a hammock in here to sleep a second person. Super comfortable. Packs away really easy back underneath the back underneath my bed when we're, when we're not using it. It's hooked up on some e tracks and some rings, um, and just kind of clips in and and it holds like roughly 500 pounds. So 
um, plenty of plenty plenty of support to, to hold a person while they're, while they're sleeping so that was probably the hardest part to figure out how I was going to manage to get two people sleeping in here comfortably especially someone who is you know taller like six foot o six for foot or over because my bed would not fit that uh, a person that that tall so next piece here is an arctic cooler i think it's a 70 quart one 50 something i forget exactly how big it is but um it did a good job keeping everything keeping everything cold that's basically what i use as a refrigerator or a, an ice chest of course while i'm out um out on these trips it also acts as a step for me to get into my bed because i'm short and it's hard for me to get into my bed so i use that as a way to step up into my bed um but one thing i might change for next year or for going forward is because I have so much power in the, in, the, in the solar generator and I'm not tapping it, especially this last trip with three guys charging a bunch of stuff, I can probably get away with getting a small kind of like dorm room size um, uh, refrigerator to use and stick in the front here and be able to do away with that because it takes up a ton of room. Or what I might do is just get a small kind of deep freeze um, because again, they're super energy efficient now. And really if I plug it in here at the house, freeze it and freeze everything that I'm gonna take with me, um, then I should be good because the, it's only going to run whenever it needs to kind of cool off, and if I'm already going to, it's already going to be frozen, so I won't have to kind of bring it from whatever the ambient temperature is to to freezing, um, which is really where the power the power suck comes from. The other kind of solution here is going more to dehydrated foods and using the jet boil again to to make those, so I can kind of get rid of having to carry so many coolers with me. So that was the one big pain this year was just how many coolers I was having to take with me, especially on a two week trip. So this worked really well, but looking for ways to either downsize or get rid of that, or maybe use only that for certain things and get rid of the other coolers that I have and have a smaller kind of uh, small refrigerator. All right, then we go under the bed to storage, which is why I built a bunk in the first place. So it'd have somewhere to put a bunch of stuff. So under there I have a spare tire, um, obviously that's critical for whenever you're traveling out of state, traveling a couple hundred, maybe thousand miles or so, 2000 miles round trip. So needed to have that with me. The one thing for next year that I want to try to figure out is how to get it out of the trailer and maybe mount it, uh, to the, to the, to the, one of the double doors in the back, or maybe mount it on the side of the, uh, on the side of the trailer itself. Um, but it just takes up too much space and it's a circle. Of course, so there's no real convenient place to put it. Um, couple t uh, tubs under there that kind of have any like of my cooking utensils and stuff like that some extra water in case we need that i have a small little shower system that i set up once in a while if i'm going to shower inside the or inside the camper have to work out some kinks on that though because it's really kind of a pain in the rear end to uh, rear end to set up one thing i forgot to mention that i have as a backup is a backup solar generator or a backup battery bank um, it's a small 330 watt it's called balder or b-a-l-d-r i'm probably pronouncing that wrong um but actually Chad picked that up because we have 1500 watts connected to the solar panels. But whenever you're out on these fall trips, you know, cause you're hunting in the fall, y'all, you always have the chance of running into like a bunch of cloudy days in a row or a bunch of rain or whatever the case is. And a couple days of, of not great sun, uh, can deplete your battery bank pretty quick. Um, so we wanted to have a backup that way we had just a little bit of juice if we needed to charge phones or whatever the case was. So we weren't completely left high and dry. So we have a small extra little battery, uh, battery bank backup. we're going to start here at the front of the trailer and talk about uh, what I have on the hitch. Um, what I did was put two 20 pound uh, propane tanks on this. The reason I have two 20 pound propane tanks is because I have a heater on the inside that depending on how cold it is, you know, will determine how often it's going to run. And each one of these tanks, if I run the heater on low, should last about 110 hours. And then I also put a toolbox on the front of the hitch as well. And this is where I keep kind of like the jacks. Um, the uh, drill to kind of to, to use to use on the jacks to, to lift the trailer off the ground to stabilize it and any odds and ends that I don't want to store inside the trailer and take up a bunch of space so things like deer hangers um, chocks to put underneath the tires and in front of the tires stuff like that just really something anything that I don't want to keep in the trailer to kind of give myself a little bit more room uh, on the side of the trailer here we put a window uh, in the in the door and the reason it went in the door is because it was the easiest place for me to place the window um, really was looking for a way to try to you know vent a little bit of heat if I needed to because the heater I have is way more than I need for the uh, for the size of this trailer so wanted to make sure that I could uh, release some heat if I needed to when we get to the back of the trailer here you know <clears throat> this is where all the solar power is going to come in um, you can see I have some lines running from the roof I did a video where I walked through my solar panel install so I'll put a link to that so you can see how I installed all that 
Then the other thing I added was a cell booster. Um, you know, working or traveling like I like to to hunt, sometimes I have to check in with work or I have to check in at home and I don't always have a great cell service or internet. So put this in so that way as long as I have a little bit of cell service, maybe a bar, I can use this to get enough cell service where I can get online, upload podcasts and do the things that I need to do or work remotely if I want to take a trip. Uh, during the week and not on the weekend, I can plug in and be able to answer emails, get on Zoom calls or whatever I need to do and work from this thing. If you dug this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to make sure you get all my upcoming videos and podcasts. And until next time, y'all got to get out.